Yeah. Out of love and for the sake of principle to save humanity, no matter who was with him, he went alone. And there are people out there who are waiting for us. And it doesn't matter, to be honest with you. It doesn't matter if the General Conference comes with us. It doesn't matter if the General Conference says, this is not an issue of religious liberty. And you know I'm speaking what I'm speaking of. I'm speaking of the mandates. It doesn't matter if everybody falls away. The essence of freedom of conscience is, is exemplified in Christ is that for the sake of love and for the sake of principle, for the sake of truth and what is right, he went forward. Isaiah chapter 50 says that he set his face like a flint. It didn't matter if nobody came with him. God was with him. And that is the essence of freedom Amen. of conscience. Amen. Amen. Uh, if, uh, if, uh, Ray, if you could come. Flesh did, did Jay just bring about? Our flesh. This flesh, right? 
Jesus Christ conquered sin, death, and the devil in this equipment. Mm -hmm. Okay? And he said, greater these things you will do. Right? How is that possible? If we follow him, he, he never claimed any of the, the miracles that he did in and of himself, right? Did he? No. no. Did he even claim the words that he spoke? No. No. So, is he asking us to do something that we can't do? No. Or something that he's enabling us to do? You know, you stop and think about it. This last generation that's going to finish the work, I mean, they're going to be the most feeble among us. <laughs> think about it. I mean, are we are we evolving or devolving? <laughs> I don't even want to say about what they teach in schools today because it's pitiful. Do you realize 50 years ago, the biggest problem that teachers had with students Chewing gum. Chewing gum. Verse 4. And declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of what? Holiness. Holiness. By the re resurrection from the dead. From the dead. By whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to what? Faith. The faith. Do you Amen. hear that? Amen. It's the genuine article among all nations for his name. This is all about Jesus' faith, brothers and sisters. Amen. Not my faith, your faith. Amen. We have nothing without Christ. Amen. He is everything. Amen. It is his faith. Amen. And something that I try to get people to understand, um, all denominations, that God only accepts absolute perfection. Amen. Do you hear me? That's only found in Jesus Christ. Amen. There is no Amen. other. Uh, somebody brought up John 14, 6 today. That is my most favorite verse in the whole Bible. I carry that light on my or that, that on my motorcycle plate. John 14. I mean, it's all there, right? Isn't it? I am the way, the truth. And the life, there's no excuse. There's no but. There's buts everywhere. But not with Jesus. He is, he is the question behind every answer, brothers and sisters. Alright, I'm going to... Um, why do my Bible keep opening to Philippians? Let's just go there. <laughs> Philippians 2, God wants me to be here. And we'll go back to Romans. And you all know these verses. This is not rocket science. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5. Uh, how do we have righteousness by faith without the mind of Christ? Right? Is that not the key? The mind of Christ. So let this mind be in you, right? Which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God thought it not robbery, to be equal with God, but made of himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. How far down did Jesus come to save us? All the way, as Jay said. Think of, you know, I wonder how the rebellion in heaven even could possibly happen. And I think to myself, you know, Jesus made this Lucifer so beautiful, so magnificent, that he thought somehow he was greater than his creator. So it tells me that Jesus must take on some humble form. Amen. Humbleness beyond what you can imagine. Amen. You know, somebody with authority never has to scream and holler. Does a cop come up to your door? I mean, you guys probably never been pulled over, but I've been pulled over. <laughs> and I've never had a police officer come and scream at me. 
come up to the door and they say, driver's license registration, please. I had a cop pull me over the other day because they thought I had a stolen car. <laughs> Somebody turned me in as a stolen car, but it was one number wrong. <laughs> I stood there for 45 minutes. I'm like, come on, you know, this is not a stolen car. This is me. But, you know, hey, it's life. But he never hollered. He's very respectful. Never had to raise his voice. You know, I didn't want to fight him. I mean, police officers has authority, right? I mean, it's the whole state of Florida I see standing there. I don't know about you guys, but I'm very visual, so I see things all visual. Boom. When I see him standing there, I see the whole state of Florida. I see all the judges, jail cells. I'm not going anywhere. I'm done. You know? Think about that. And this is just one man. Now, Jesus, what does he represent? Do you think he's going to holler and scream? He never has to. He never had to. If he hollers, it's finished. <laughs> I mean, everything's going to fall apart. The Bible says that all things consist Amen. by the word of his power. Amen. Think about that. Amen. Do you realize how many, how much power there is in that little teeny fruit tree that stands out front of this property? It's about this high. I don't know why we don't use more nuclear power. Because you split one atom and you That's can right. power things forever. That's right. Right? But... I don't even want to go there. That's politics again. <laughs> but I'm talking about one little tree that Jesus made. What does Jesus own? Everything. Amen. And us. Does he have a right to claim authority? Mm -hmm. But he doesn't scream and holler about it. He, he woos you. He woos you with righteousness. Mm -hmm. Right? He wants you to have his faith. Mm -hmm. That's how we get righteousness by faith. Mm -hmm. We stop focusing on all these wonderful things that the devil tries to throw in your way because there's all these sins that so easily beset each and every one of you. And I don't know what they are for you, but I know what they are for me. And the devil can throw that little, that little fish hook out there, you know, and he'll get you to hook on it. And he don't have to pull it in all at once. He can let you swim around and think you're free. Yeah, you think you're wonderful. Everything's good. You got this hook in your mouth. Feels so good. It tastes wonderful. <laughs> you're swimming around, and all of a sudden, Jesus is calling. Right? You start tugging, going in a direction, and the devil's like, "Whoa, you're mine!" And then you realize, "Wait a second here. What's going on? What's going on? Where is our focus?" The reason we're still here is because we're not focused on what we need to be focused on. Amen. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Righteousness by faith comes only through Him. Mm -hmm. He's promised us, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. This stuff isn't rocket science, but you know what? We think we know something. The Bible says we know nothing as we ought to know it. Right? But the problem is we think we know something. Little children, they don't believe they know very much. So they gobble things up. They learn so fast and they grow so fast. Don't you think we could still do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could if we had the same kind of attitude as a little child. How does Jesus say people come into the kingdom? Look, as a little child. Why? Because they're believing. Right? What is it? What happens to us? You see so many people come into the church, they learn all these things, and then they become righteous. Right? Hello? I mean, come on. Let us focus on Jesus. If you see this guy stumbling, help him out. Don't rat him out. Beat him up. Stand him up and say, look, look, look and live. This is where we ought to be. This is a hospital for sick people. I don't think anybody's got it together yet. Jesus has got it together. Amen. This is a simple talk. I mean, I'm not going to take a lot of time because I'm just a you know, low-hanging fruit guy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I don't try to mess around with this. Those, my wife is very detail-oriented. She's like, got to know every little part. And I'm like, where are we going? Just tell me the end. I want to know where it is. You know. Um, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You, you know, imagine the faith it would take to look at a dying Savior and believe.
believe in him. When you're dying the same faith he is. You know, people talk about, oh, they want that kind of faith. You know, just at the last minute, I'm going to give my heart to Jesus and I'm going to walk into the kingdom. Huh? Do you have any idea how much faith that man must have had? I mean, stop and put yourself in that man's position for a minute. This guy, are you kidding me? Yeah, someday, I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine the angels when God says, here, you write his name down. Angels be like, what? <laughs> you know, we don't know. We have no idea. Let's leave God's work in God's hands. Okay, let's turn to John real quick. Chap John, um, chapter 6. Pharisees had a big problem with Jesus, didn't they? Yeah. The scribes, all these guys. What did they say to him in John chapter 6 and 28? They said, they said unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? What does Jesus say? Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he hath sent. Where's that focus? The focus is Jesus. The focus is listening intently. That's what the word obey means. We think obey means i got to do all these things. It makes me righteous and good. No. Listen, it's easier to go give yourself up to this work and do this work and do everything. Give up all your money than it is to die to self. Dying to self is where it's at. And when you look at Jesus Christ, you know what you see? You're going to see you for who and what you are. And you know what? In that moment, you know what needs to be fixed. Jesus doesn't beat you. He says, this is the way. Walk ye in it. Who's the way? Jesus is the way. This stuff isn't rocket science. We need to come again as little children. Not making it all difficult. Turn to two, uh, Romans once again. I'm going to try to get this real short. If I get going too long, just tell me shut up and get out of there. But uh, I think I've only been here 10 minutes. So, Romans, um, let's go to chapter 9. Y'all there? I'm reading from the King James. So, Elias. And 27, 9 and 27, also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Verse 28 says, for he will finish the work. What work? The work we're supposed to do? Huh? And cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Brothers and sisters, don't try to carry the load that you can't handle. It's God's work. He will make the way. Listen, I get all these people come up, well, shouldn't we do it? Be moving to the mountains and we got to do this and we got to buy this and go there and sell everything. And I'm like, how do you know where to go? <laughs> what, what are you going to take? I, wait a minute. I haven't heard yet what the Lord wants me to do. And it's, it's just like a, a church board meeting. You, you know, if, you, if you're, God is not directing you, you're going to make mistakes. And if you're making mistakes, that means you're backing up. Okay? I don't want to back up. I'd rather stand still for a few minutes. Yeah. I started playing softball not that long ago. And um, I'm, I'm a type A guy. i, I got to move, right? I, it's very hard for me to stand still, but this mic is here. That's why I'm standing still. <laughs> and I, I want to I move. And I, I, I find myself a tendency to want to move too fast before I know where i got to go. It's very hard for me to sit there for a second and know. But I'm getting a lot better at it. And that's what we need to do. We need to sit down for a second and get our orders. Because then we know how to march. And we know how to handle things. And we're going to run into things. And every, you know, everything that Jesus did was a divine appointment. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an accident. It was a divine appointment. 
He knew early in the morning. He got his marching orders, and he knew where he was going, what he was doing. They come up to him, oh, my master, you're going to blah, blah. He says, listen, it's not my time. It's not my time. He always knew. How did he know? He knew because the Holy Spirit was leading him. Just like it says in the Bible that it led him out into the desert to be tempted of the devil for 40 days. Right? You know, he may have been weakest physically at that moment, but he was never standing taller in spiritual fire and power than he was at that moment. <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ wants to lead us the same way, but we have to let him. That's the problem. You know what? It's difficult to think. We teach our children what to think these days instead of how to think. Amen. Thinking is work. I mean, if you really are going to think, you sit there and you sweat. You follow me? Because that's what real thinking takes. But unless the mind is stayed on Christ, it doesn't matter what you're going to do. Because you're going nowhere. Um, I'm going to wrap this up quickly. I want to uh, let's go to let's go to Romans 10, right across the page there, 13. 10 and 13. What does it say? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Does it say whosoever shall whosoever called upon? It says whosoever shall call. Upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean? How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. This is the verse that made me think of Raymond. Verse 15. Okay? Listen, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What does that really mean? It means all who are depending completely, wholly, and solely upon Jesus Christ. Amen. With the faith of Jesus. They will walk through the valley of the shadow of doubt, of death, all of these things that this earth will throw at us. And they will not be stopped. But here, I'm going to end with this, Matthew 24 and 14. I'm right at 15 minutes, so I'm going to I'll be quick. Matthew 24 and 15. Now, as I said, preach. But, you know, you hear all these people say, preach, 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 right? Is that what the world's waiting for? The gospel to be preached to the whole world? Because my Bible says that the gospel was preached to the whole world, doesn't it? And this gospel, verse 14, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness, or some Bibles will say testimony, unto all nations, and then shall the end come. What is that word testimony? If you look that up, the transliterated word is maturation. It means something evidential. The world is sick of words. It's sick of talk. You know, let me give you the Missouri um, statement. Show me. That's what they want to see. So, you know, I heard it said from here today that you can't preach the gospel without words. I disagree. I disagree. This is what the world is waiting for. The gospel without words. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. When he has a church that is marching like an army with banners. The end is done, and it's over. It's game out of the box, whatever you want to call it. Because the world will not be able to stand for it. Because this happened before. The Bible says the, that these 12 men turned the world upside down, right? 
And what happened to all them guys? The world couldn't stand them, could they? No. What do you think is going to happen to all of these people that do the same thing again? Look, there's going to be no gray area. I mean, we need to write a song, No Gray Area. <laughs> there it is, because it's coming. God's people are going to shine like jewels. Look, I'm already over three minutes, so... <laughs> Y'all, um, if we could just have one word of prayer for this real quick, and I'll step out. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for... For the cross of Jesus Christ, because without that, everything means nothing, Lord. But it didn't end at the cross. We know that you are in the most holy apartment of the sanctuary. And you are longing to do a work in your people. And I pray that you move heaven and earth to make us ready. Turn our heads. Cause us to see the things that we refuse to look at. To admit the things that we refuse to admit. To break down every barrier. And let your people see you in your glory, that we would be able to stand tall and finish the work in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Raymond was quite a multifaceted man. I don't know if you know this, but Raymond was a, a medical missionary. Um, he would go to conferences and he'd buy books like this one here, How Your Body, uh, Your Body's Many Cries for Water. But he was a mission, a medical missionary of a different stripe, in that he was he was able to to unseed me from things that I held very tenaciously to. Um, and it was only Raymond that could bring me across that line. Uh, I'm a trained nurse, and I appreciate the spirit of prophecy for many, many years. But it was only Raymond that could convince me that certain things were good for me that I really was convinced that were not good for me. And, and I won't keep you guessing too long. Because Raymond pulled me across the line with dark chocolate. Anybody over here who has succumbed to Raymond's pull across the line of dark chocolate? No? So I'm the only one that fell for it? Yes. And, and, and it's, it's in the context of, of, of health. Raymond always had something that, that, that was really interesting and he would, you know, back it up with, with, with some good solid evidence. Um, I don't know if you know this, but, but Raymond and Buffy went to uh, the, the health conferences that were like held in, in California, and <clears throat> it had a whole gamut <coughs> of, 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 of uh, uh, ideas, specifically New Age ideas, and their purpose to be there was to share the health message. They would go there and they would hand out, by the droves, the ministry of healing and influence those thought leaders in the, uh, that, that were on, you know, on the bandwagon that I would not go to. But Raymond was this, um, this, 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 this medical missionary, and I appreciated him. For that, um, uh, the, the chocolate part of it is, if you have the sugar out of it and the milk out of it, there are some wonderful anti-cancer agents in 
dark chocolate. And if he woke up, woke up a smoothie for you with dark chocolate, mm. it was most delicious. Whoever had a dark, uh, a smoothie, just a smoothie from Raymond. <laughs> oh, there's a whole lot of you guys that are, uh, that, that are, that are poorer for that. I don't have a, a, a lot to say except that the health message is very precious to me and it's become very precious to me over the last year and a half, even more so. And in, in Psalms, in Psalms 37, uh, sorry, so, so, Psalms 67, uh, verses 